Today, we're going to talk with former Sooner and Minnesota Viking, Jeff Bidette, and all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, we're going to talk with Jeff Bidette about his experiences at the Minnesota Vikings, also his play, and how he prepared for his pro day and dropped a 4.2740 yard dash, which is absolutely flying. And I think one of the major reasons he was able to secure one of 10 spots Minnesota Vikings practice squad. And I want to talk about that for just a minute. What you need to understand as a football player, kiddos and parents, is that yes, we all want you to get to the NFL. We all want you to be one of these people that makes the rookie minimum of half a million dollars in 2019, $495,000 according to the collective bargaining agreement. I also want you to know that at this point, it is time for you to start thinking about what it means to be a professional. And that's one of the things I wanted to get into Jeff about just how does he go from his day to day and what is his life like as a practice squad player for the Vikings? Now, according to the collective bargaining agreement, he's scheduled, like most folks that make the practice squad in September this year, to make $8,000 a week over the 17 weeks of the season, which is about $136,000 and about $100,000 before taxes, which is a really good salary for anybody in the United States of America working for a living wage. The other thing I want you to notice is that the Alliance is paying $250,000 over three years, $70,000 in the first year to all of the players that are in that league. We don't know what the XFL is planning to pay its players, but I'm assuming it's going to be competitive with the Alliance. And we've come such a long way in professional football and how players get paid. We're talking about guys that get paid $600 a week to play in NFL Europe, which is nothing. It is paltry, even at the turn of the century, when these guys were getting paid that $600. But again, take this money and invest it if that is you, and don't scoff at an opportunity to play professional football. I know everybody wants to get drafted, and we talk a lot about the guys that are going to be drafted in the first round, guys that are going to make between 7 and $35 million, according to the rookie scale. We're also talking about guys that are going to go undrafted and have their opportunities to make the team as a free agent. And there are success stories. Tony Jefferson was an undrafted free agent who ended up making good at the Arizona Cardinals and now the Baltimore Ravens as a safety. But again, both Jeff Bidette and Tony Jefferson had pretty distinguished careers among big-time college football players. Jeff Bidette was a guy that returned kicks and was a number one for Oklahoma. Now, did he have the kind of season that Marquise Brown had last year? No. We're talking about Marquise Brown in a little bit of a different way. But you'll know a lot about Marquise Brown. You know a lot about DK Metcalf. You'll know a lot about Kyler Murray. What you won't know a lot about is how you can still make a living, but also how you can sustain that living over time. And the NFL doesn't necessarily care about your body. We know that because the health insurance is kind of garbage. After you leave the NFL, if you have the vested seasons in four years, four seasons, six games in a season, for this to occur, you're only going to get five years of health care. And you're only going to get that five years of health care from people that don't know you, who don't have the medical binder thick of your injuries, the things that have happened to you, what may be going on with you mentally, and how you might have bounced back from a knee injury, a sh separated shoulder, a broken pinky, what have you. And your body is your most important asset as a football player. It is the thing for which you are able to play football. You're big, you're fast, you're strong. You're not going to be all three of those things for any length of time. By the time you're 35, you're going to be staring at life after football. And life after football means did you invest your money? Did you get the 2% on the CD? Did you match your 401k, right? My man, Corey Hilliard, who's the producer of my show, is an eight-year NFL veteran. And he talked about how Titus Young was in there with him where they're getting this talking to about finances. And the Detroit Lions said, we will match your 401k up to $17,500 
And Titus Young said, no, just pay me my money. For which I pull out my hair, so did Corey. Because Corey understands what it means to try to scratch and claw and make a living in this league. He was on practice squad for three years, and he needed all three years to make a team. Now, according to CBA, you only have two years that you can be on a practice squad. So after those two years, they either have to pick you up for the 53-man roster and pay you the minimum of a veteran or release you. And by that time, maybe you've made the squad, maybe you haven't. But if you're in high school and you're a four-star, you're a five-star, even a three-star, if you make it to a Division I program and you're the kind of guy that can play professional football, begin to start thinking about what you're going to do with your money as not just what you're going to do with your degree. Also think about what kind of lifestyle you want to lead and how you can lead that lifestyle when you're 60 as opposed to 30. All right, now let's talk to Jeff Bidette about his experiences with the Minnesota Vikings, including being the number one on the scout team and how all of this figures into his psyche. But most importantly, he was mentally prepared for what was to come, and that is making all the difference. So Jeff, tell me, how did you prepare to run a 42740 at your pro day last year? Oh uh, man, to be honest, coming in, running my 40, I already knew I was fast. If anything, if I would have just if I would have just been like running on my own, I knew I was gonna run a 43. The main thing with me is is uh preparing for the first ten yards of running the forty. Because a guy like me, I get faster the more I run, the longer the distance, so I'm not a guy that kind of like shoot out at the beginning. So that was the main thing that I was focusing on when preparing for my 40. So running 42 is the first thing you are. Yeah, but just that in and of itself, getting down to those first 10 yards can make all the difference because the NFL combines this weekend and we watch guys like DK Metcalf go 4-3-3. We watch guys like Paris Campbell go 4-3-1. Getting under that 4-3 seems to be nearly impossible so for you to go and do it and to put your hand in the dirt be like nah I have this in me is also mental right yeah of course of course I, I know I knew coming in I wanted to run for it too and when I was training I was training to run for it too man I, I can't imagine training to run for it too I'm, I'm trying to run six flat dog uh come on man <laughs> hey, hey look look I'm just keeping it 100 with you so Getting into your experiences in the league, how did you find yourself with the Vikings? Uh, well, going in the whole process, uh, there was like top thirty visits, and I only had one top thirty visit, and I was with the Minnesota Vikings. So, going into the draft, I knew they had some interest in me. Going into this whole process, so when it came down to me picking teams, I figured that I'd go with them since I feel like they were showing me the most love. Right, and that's got a it's got a lot to do with it being undrafted and whatnot because you have to have a good feel yeah. for them. They have to have a good feel for you. When you got there, what was the most interesting part of being a part of that organization? Uh, crazy sharing the locker room with guys that I've been watching on TV for a while. So I had to get past that level. I had to just tell myself like, "Come on, now you in the NFL too, now?" So and it, so that it was just so that was like the main thing when we first going in there was just seeing the guys that are all pros making Pro Bowls and this and that, and then sharing the locker room with them. Were you a practice squad guy last year? Yes, I was. Okay. What is the difference between being on the active roster and being a practice squad player for the folks that don't know? All right, so practice squad is just the team believe, the team actually just believes in you that they think that you're a great player, but they just feel like there's a couple of things that you need to work on to make that bigger jump. So that's so as a practice squad player, you just you're going against whatever you're if you're on offense, you're going against the first team defense every day. If you're on defense, you're going against the first team offense every day. So that's kind of an advantage of just showing the coaches that if we're doing good at practice, then, then that means that guy is able to go up and play on Sunday. So that's that's pretty much the difference. So you play in scout team, you're preparing the first team defense, scout team. For, yeah, for what they're going to see every week, exactly every week. So who was the the most important player you think that you had to try to be for the scout team? Like, you know how some guys back in the day, I'm going to be Randy Jackson this – or Randy Jackson, Randy Moss this week. Uh, that's, that's what Nate <laughs> yeah, Jackson used to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who were you? Yeah, yeah, All right, so pretty much uh, every every team we were going against, I was playing the number one receiver most of the, uh, most of the time this week. 
So that's that's the type of player I was at receiver. Like we were playing against, like for instance, when we played against the Patriots, I was Julian Edelman playing him. When we played against the Packers, I was Devonte Adams. We played against uh, the Rams, I was like Brandon Cooks. You know what I'm saying? It was just it was pretty much just how I was like that. Just just giving the uh, scouts and defense a look. Did you have fun with that? Were you able to try to just put yourself in that position? Maybe. One of the things that I thought was interesting about Randy Moss when he played is the dude really did not care if it was a run play. He would skip off the line. <laughs> he he would yep. walk off the line. Did you have fun with the mannerisms that these guys have? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the most fun part is just pretty much watch the film on a guy that, um, that, that I got to play and actually go out there and give our defense a great look as if I am that receiver. So I got a chance to learn a lot of moves in my, in my game plan just going off of this playing scout team for like other great players in the league. So it really was like me taking stuff away from them. <laughs> Who was the first person to hit you in the league? The first person to hit me in the league? Mm hmm At practice, at training uh, camp. Who was the first uh, person to hit you? Oh, uh, we didn't we ain't never we ain't never no contact with like that in practice. Like really? oh, the NFL is different. Like they, yeah, the NFL is different. Like they do a really good job at like I don't know, stand up. Like I don't know, it's like practice like professional. So, so I ain't really got that that hit in practice. You know what I'm saying? Everybody stand up. So you ain't getting popped yet? No, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Did I? But I don't, no, I, I haven't gotten out yet. <laughs> wow. No, like that's. I was not expecting to hear that. Uh, quite honestly, like it was just, it was just, it was just one time in camp. I got hit, but it was kind of like it wasn't a kill shot. Like the guy, the guy knew he had a clean hit him. He kind of like when I caught the ball, he like you know what I'm saying, hit me, but I didn't fall down to the ground. That was probably like the worst hit I got. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh. So you're not getting hit, you catch your passes, you're playing Devontae Adams. What was, what's the worst part about being in the NFL for you? Oh, man, just, just seeing that you're practicing with everybody and then when it's finally game day, like you're not super deep. <laughs> so that was pretty much the hard part because, you know what I'm saying, there was many times where <clears throat> I wanted to go out there and play so bad, man, just because of the uh, competitor that I am. But like I said, I just say of course, I just use it as a learning year. It's giving me much more confidence to be going in the year two. Stand. So I'm gonna give you opportunity now, because this is one of the reasons that we want to talk. Hollywood ain't run. Marquise ain't run the forty. Probably won't oh run the God. forty. Kyler probably won't run the forty. Didn't run it at the combine. Rodney didn't run it at the combine. Might not run it at pro day. Do you think you faster than all these dudes? Man, come on, man. I'm always, I'm always take me anything. But um, if I if, if I really had like to pick somebody to to go in and like beat my time, it would be Marquise. Oh yeah, you think he yeah. goes up four three? Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. Mark Marquise is one of those guys that that's gonna you know what I'm saying come in running four three anyway. So his main thing is just trying to get under that. And then I just see him, you know what I'm saying, how hard he trains and stuff. Um, that'll be a person that I know that that'll probably beat it. How fast do you think uh, Kyler and Rodney are? Uh, Kyler for sure, four three guy. I know my man Rodney coming back from a uh, injury and stuff like that, but I still think he's a four four guy. So those two right here, I get Kyler four three easy, and I can see Rodney coming running in the four fours. Man, I know you are a year removed from playing with the team, and whatnot, and I know you came over from Kentucky, but. Getting to know this squad in, in 2017 and being a big part of what they were able to accomplish, who of these guys that we're talking about should we be talking about more or should we be mentioning that just don't necessarily make it into headlines? You talking about a guy that's still on the team right now? Right now. Man, you guys, you guys finally just see his play, so I'm not going to say CD, but I know Rambo for sure is a guy that's going to get a lot of headlines coming in. That's the guy that had a year. You know what I'm saying? Get a year under his gun and get more confidence coming into year two. Where he was waiting on his chance. So my guy Rambo, man, my man Trey Norwood and Trey Brown. They even had me name the whole team. I think. Well, well, I mean, let's start. Let's start with those. Let's start with those guys because (laughs) Rambo was a dude that had a really big Orange Bowl, especially with Marquise being hurt. But I remember him missing that that throwback that Basquin put on his hands, and I was like, y'all. This is why yeah. we don't, yeah, why we don't yeah, see Charleston yeah, yeah. no more. It's like, he didn't come down with that, <laughs> that ball. Was the first play, though. That, was, that, that was the first play, though, man. He, had to, he really had to get that out of the system. That was the type of guy Rambo with, man. He just, that pass just woke him up, and he already, he already knew that he had to keep working hard for them to 
for him to get back on the field. And you know what I'm saying? He was he was waiting his turn. I know I was a big believer in Rambo when he was when he came in his freshman year. So talking about Trey, Trey Brown and Trey Norwood. Trey Brown seemed to step yeah, up, and, and for for a lot of people, that's the that's the critics pick for the best corner on this team. I know Parnell is still. I believe in Parnell Motley. I just think that get him some I'm ball a fan. I'm a huge fan of Piedmont. Right? I'm a huge fan of Piedmont. But of those yeah, two dudes, like, who who was giving you problems? Well, I don't know, man. It got, it got, it got serious when we did our one on ones at Oklahoma, man. I don't know, man. I just, I know me and, me and Piedmont going back and forth. Uh, at the beginning, me and JT used to go back and forth and stuff like that. Uh, those guys, those, those guys were young, though, see no good and Trey Brown, so, I don't know when I see them, boy. I don't know. I just like, man, I can't, I can't let a freshman get me. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but both of those guys are real good. I, I said it was pretty much equal between those two because we went back and forth uh, too. So when you were coming over, uh, Dennis Simmons obviously was your position coach. That dude just had a, a heck of a recruiting haul with Theo Weiss, Jaden Hazelwood, Trajan Bridges. What do you think it is about him that makes him a capable recruiter? Man, Coach, uh, Coach Simmons, man, he's like family, man. He's a guy that's gonna, he's not just gonna talk to you during your college years at uh, at Oklahoma, man. He's gonna make it, you know what I'm saying, for everything. You know what I'm saying? I still talk to Coach Simmons to this day. That's just how the person he is, his family oriented. If somebody can see that he's that he that he really wants to be family, then that's when really get guys to go to Oklahoma. Very cool. Is there anything that I didn't ask you about that you want to talk about? Uh. I think we're supposed to talk about guys preparing yeah. to get into the league or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> what would you say that they that they need to be prepared with? Oh, uh, man, just, just pretty much like the speed ain't really much di- uh, different in the league. It's just how a guy reacts. Mm. That's the main difference between college and football. Guys are reacting way quicker than what guys are doing in college. And that's where that's what guys need to really uh know coming into the league is just – Getting into that playbook and just trying to and try to study film as much as possible, and then you you'll be able to have a great career and also to take care of your body. That's that's really number one. Take care of your body. It's about it's about who's available. No, oh, that's what's up. It's about who's available. Fifty three man, yeah man, next man up. Yeah. Well, Jeff again. Yeah. I appreciate your time, bro. Um, My guy. Man, I've been going back and forth with you on Twitter for a while now. Now I got I got got more to talk about. Got more to talk about, and I'll catch up with you soon, okay? All right, man. Thanks, man. You have a good day. All right, Jeff. Bye.